The following is an encore presentation of New Expressions. And it's five past ten on a glorious, beautiful Friday morning. Man, there's blue skies out there. Enjoy it. Summer's around the corner. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. This is New Expressions. My co-host, Craig Stevens. I'm looking at him on my screen. You're a beautiful man. Good morning, Craig. How are we? Yay, yay. Good to be a beautiful man and not have coffee in hand because that's usually what what uh, what accredited me the status of beautiful man. But, um, you know, when we can't actually get together in the studio, courtesy of restrictions, then coffees don't end up being in hand either, which is very, very tragic. But you know what? There's going to be a day. There's coming a day. It's Friday. Friday, but Sundays are coming. Uh, No, no, don't get me confused. I'm not saying restrictions ease on Sunday. I'm just saying, you know, fairly (laughs) soon, (laughs) fairly soon we'll be able to be face-to-face and have coffees again, and that will be a great and glorious day. One day. yeah, very soon, soon and very soon. You know, we've got uh, the great, great privilege of having another king and legend, giant champion uh, of our region on the Zoom with us this morning, going right across the airwaves with Rima CC, Pastor Lynn Follett from Living Waters. What an honour to have you with us. You are Kingdom Party Queen, I think. You carry the, the mantle of... Uh, wow. Party. wow. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> And so it's always I like that. My, my, it is. My husband and I, before we were saved, we went to a, um, a birthday party or something in Sydney um, and we were a bit late. And when we walked in, they all got up and cheered and clapped because they thought we were the entertainers. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> no, we're just here to party with you. We can't do anything. Oh, <laughs> I would have broke out in song and dance. Not a problem because I'm a walking sitcom. I would have had fun with that. <laughs> You would have. It was hilarious. We was like, no, we're not the entertainers. Anyway, and then you Evan would have entertained them. Yeah, but you proceeded to entertain them for the next hour. I mean, you know, you're sporting this the swankiest pair of pink glasses. I think is what I is that what they are? That's is that what you got? Yeah, they're my rangers. They're they're mega fashion and uh, and and you, you got to have a certain you know capacity to be able to pull that off and you certainly do. Just the coffee. What's the secret? What's the secret to bilocating? Because you were preaching in your own church on Sunday morning, but you're also preaching across the airwaves on Rima. How do how do you do that? How do you pull that off? That's pretty impressive. Uh, I can't tell you too much. It's a secret from the from the kingdom. <laughs> Uh, you know, translate at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Well, the key secrets that I think we want to know, a few of us do. I'm keen. I'm ready to go. Let's, let's pull some of this stuff together. I don't know. It's, you guys want this. It's nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, Pastor Lynn, we've, you know, thank you for joining us on your expressions. And, and it is, it's always a delight and, and loads of fun with you. Um, and and that's that's the testimony of kingdom. I think it's got to it's got to be fun. Um, and and I I uh, I really appreciate your time with us this morning too. Um, I, I was asking you off air, you know, uh, what uh, what is what is it that you have stirring in your heart this morning for a conversation on? And um, and you were you were kind of pretty clear the Lord's been on on your case a bit. Is that right? Is he been speaking to you about? Yeah. Why don't you share with us? um... Well, um, yeah. I don't know whether I said anything here, but the Lord gave me a word a couple of, or maybe six weeks ago, and um, I didn't know what the word was. I mean, I was just about to go to bed, and uh, I was just about to turn the lamp off, and this word just dropped into my heart, and it just kept coming, and I thought, oh, it's... I think that's you, Holy Spirit, because you won't stop. And um, I didn't know what the word meant, so I had to look it up. So I got my, you know, my dictionary out, and I looked it up, and it was a, it's a painting term called pentimento. The funny thing is that I knew it was Italian because the Holy Spirit kept speaking it in an Italian way, pentimento, and I'm like, I'm not even sure I can spell it, but I looked it up. So when I looked it up. It's a painting term, which means it's um, it's a painting that's uh, you know got a, got a painting on the on the surface, but then it's been painted 
over again. So there's a hidden painting in this in this artwork. And I thought, okay, hidden, something hidden. Yeah, okay, God, take me along the bunny trail. And then I then I went further down and the word means repentance in Italian. And I'm like, oh, oh now you're speaking. Wow. Repentance. Yeah. So wow. I, he won't let that go. I've been preaching on it for a couple of weeks and it's like every week he just he just takes me back to it constantly. And um, like, you know, like we said before in Matthew that um, the first thing Jesus said when he came from the, the wilderness was uh, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, John had been preaching that, John the Baptist, repent. And I mean, hey, if you're like today's society, you think, oh, they got together and talked about that. But no, they didn't. Because it's the message, it's the gospel, it's the whole thing. You know, there in a nutshell, let's start at the beginning. And I, I don't think there's ever been a time where I, I've been alive and that's nearly 70 years. <gasps> Did I say that? <laughs> no, she's fallen wise now. That's not possible. No. No, that's not right. Uh, something's wrong there. Anyway, um, that, that there, you know, there's been, it's time to look at ourselves everything is demanding our attention in the world today like constantly media obsessed and um and the lord just keeps saying i want you to stop listening to everything i want you to listen to my voice uh there's such a demand on on everything and it's like what's god saying that's where i was at what are you saying and um he gave me another scripture out of um hosea which I got to find because it's a little tiny book in the Bible. Um, I've got my notes here, so you know you'll have to put up with me while I flick through. But anyway, what he says, I I I want you to call me. It's like um, Hosea two fourteen to twenty three. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. What do I say, Hosea? Hosea two fourteen. No, Hosea two fourteen. Yeah. Um, it says, therefore, behold, I will allure her, bring her into the wilderness and speak kindly to her. Then I will give her vineyards from there. He's talking about Israel. Um, and the Valley of Achor is a door of hope. And she will sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. And this is, the, to me, the, the quintessential part. Verse 16 says, it will come about in that day, declares the Lord, that you will call me Ishi." Ishi. Now, Ishi in Hebrew means my husband. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, he's he just keeps saying, you've got to come back to the simplicity of the gospel. Mm. I want to be the closest thing in your life. And, you know, God wants to be a husbandman in our life. And, and I'm like, you know what, God, you're calling us back to intimacy. Mm. I mean... Has there ever been a day where we're manipulated by the media and it's like everybody's got an opinion, everybody knows what's going on, to be or not to be, this is the question, you know, will I do this, will I do that? They said this, they said that. And it's like I, I just think it's media fatigue. Nothing wrong there, Evan, you're a darling. We love this media. So <laughs> Well, you you, yeah, I mean, you can't change the conversation if you're not at the table. So that's why we're here. Oh, absolutely. And um, I think it's an exciting day. And I think that instead of getting angry, which, you know, like many people are so angry and um, Christians, I'm surprised at the division in many Christians thinking and uh, it's like, excuse me, what's God saying in, in all of this? What does he want us to do? What does he want us to be in the middle of this season that we're in? Mm. And for me, I mean, I can't say anything else, but he keeps saying repentance um, and everything that goes with that. Acts 3.19 says, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And I'm like, we, if we've ever had a day where we need to be refreshed, we can't get to be with each other. And so many people miss that. 
community. They just miss being with each other. I mean, we've got teaching coming out of our ears in, in today's culture, in our society. Um, but if teaching was going to do it, we'd all be satisfied, but we're not because everything about God is a relationship. Yeah. It's not a head knowledge. It's a heart knowledge. No, so well said. So well said. Pastor Lynn Follett, Living Waters, you're, you're inviting a, 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 the church to rethink uh, this time yeah. that, that we're in uh, locally, it's called lockdown. Globally, it's called a pandemic. But the time to to re-engage the intimate journey with Jesus, um, to repent, if you like, to turn back to, to turn back into the arms of a husband, a lover, the Lord Jesus, who has has uh, yeah. invited. Oh, well, that was a beautiful passage of scripture. Was it Hosea you read? Where it was this invitation to come yeah. away, come away yeah. with the Lord, you know, um, and yeah. uh, and uh, just such a, a refreshing and uh, beautiful picture of that. I, I've had. Gee, I'm so glad you've raised this. I've, I've had conversations this week, several of them, with um, really really good people, um, Jesus followers, Christians who, you know, have absolutely confidence in their their salvation and you know their their trust or their their their, their belief in Jesus and so on and I'm I'm also kind of just have this little question about you know do you believe in him or do you know him and and really mm. the the knowing him is this great 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 opportunity isn't it to, in these days is to to really spend time with waste time with Jesus. That's a it's not actually possible to waste time with Jesus, but what I mean is is literally just to carve out the time to be with him uh and and mm. uh and attentive to him, to his heartbeat, to his voice. Um that beautiful grace of repentance to returning to our oh, Marcelin, you you oh. you're in the treasure trove today. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's really lovely. Um, I mean, met- metaneo is the word repent, and it means um, to repent with regret accompanied by a true change of heart before God. And I think, you know, okay, we're, we're all locked up in our little houses and perhaps we're pacing from wall to wall to wall to wall, getting angry about what we haven't got, but let's look at what we do have. Let's. Uh, you do know that yesterday was the Day of Atonement in the Jewish calendar. Mm. And last week, yep, um, Yom Kippur. And last week was Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. Now, those 10 days in between that are called the 10 days of awe. As you know, Craig, we listen to that. Um, and and that time is uh, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, they have apples and honey to celebrate the New Year uh, so that it'll be a sweet New Year. And then the Day of Atonement is a day of repentance um, and, and introspection and forgiveness. And, and you know, I'm like, wow, God, you've been saying this to me for weeks and weeks and weeks, and, and, and here it is. Um, it, it is just absolutely amazing. God is so precise and so seasonal. Now, Jewish people have been celebrating these things for, what, thousands of years, um, and we're kind of like, yeah, We've had Jesus for 2,000, um, and, you know, he was, of course, our, our sacrificial lamb, and we don't celebrate those feasts as such, but God has such precision when he wants to speak to us about something. He'll take anything out of his word, and, and it's like, hey, are you listening to me? Are you listening? Hey, wow. are you listening? You got, you got your spiritual ears on? I'm like, no, nah, they're all clogged up with the media. Can't hear it. Thing. Did you hear what Owen so said? And listen to that guy. Uh, the interesting thing about it is if you have a look at your news feed, um, we often don't notice, but we have a little look, and on the side in little writing, it'll have opinion. Right. Eh? And not fact. You're wow. like, oh, oh, this is someone's opinion. This isn't someone's fact. Oh, that's the news editor? Oh, He's giving us his opinion on when we're going to get out and why we should do it and how it's going to look and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, okay, you're an editor. Yeah. Wow, that's it, interesting. It used to be posted at the top <laughs> of so, articles as opinion piece, but then that stopped and it was moved yeah. to, to the little tiny little byline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I think that um, 
I, I just think, wow, this is such a time to focus on God. I, I love Ken Duncan. I mean, who doesn't love Ken's work? Um, and you know, so I'm always re- referring back to, you know, your lens. You need to focus on what you want. And I, I, if you've ever been with Ken when he's taking photos, I have, um, and he wants to do a gorgeous shot and it's over there in the distance and then suddenly some tourist starts wandering across his frame, he's like, get out of my picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a shot. And and I think that's what we need to do. We need to focus on what God wants us to look at. And all those interlopers in life, and I'm not talking about people, but I'm talking about the, um, you know, like the, the, the demands. It's like, get out, move aside, take yourself somewhere else. I've got things I've got to look at. So I, I can see clearly. Oh, there's a song, Evan. Come on. The rain is come. Yes. That's it. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, my wife is should. at home going, no, no. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Psalm twenty six two says, "Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind." And and Second Corinthians thirteen five says, um, "Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves." And I I think you know, like I'm I'm not talking about navel gazing. I'm talking about serious introspection in the presence of God. You know, it's about the heart. Mm-hmm. It's about the heart. Right. Oh, I just love him so much. It's just crazy. Just call me Ishti. Call me my, my husband. Thank oh. you. I'll let your husband me. Come on. Come on. A, hus- a husband looks after, looks after the fields. Make sure everything's just right. Pulls the weeds, um, you know. Sows the seed, waters the, waits for the increase, and, and it's such a picture of who God is for us. I think this is an exciting time, but I might be a bit special. Many <laughs> people think. <laughs> well, there's no question, Pastor Lynn, You are special. Praise you God. We're great. When we get out of this, we need to have a party. Yeah, my word. We're grateful that you're um, this gift to the Central Coast. I, I, my heart's burning with that, uh, the, this beautiful idea. The Lord is is calling us to repentance, um, to repent and believe. I love the Gospel of Mark. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, the, he, he literally says um, in Mark one fifteen, the Gospel according to Jesus, the good news according to Jesus, the kingdom of God has now come. Repent and believe. Yes. In other words, shift yes. your narrative up into the new story of the kingdom. And what you've painted for us today is, well, one of the key dimensions of the kingdom of God is intimacy. You know, the big, yes. the big fraud that's been inflicted on the world is that Christianity is a religion. And uh, and and I'd say, you know, as we probably all agree, that's a, a fallacy and a lie um, because we weren't rescued to a story of religion. We were res- rescued to a story of intimate encounter with our king. And um, and so yes. intimacy and to know the king intimately, to know our father, to, to bust on through the curtain and face to face in the Holy of Holies, all of these are the provisions of the saints for the saints today. And uh, and if I'm hearing yes. you, you're saying to us, abide in that space, abide in that space, participate in the intimacy that is afforded you uh, with Christ in these days. Is that, is that basically it, Pastor Lynn? Oh, that, that's it in a bit. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> New expressions uh, every Friday morning. We brag on Jesus. We've got the amazing. I thought you were talking when you said when you're introducing the song for. I thought you were talking about Lynn, Pastor Lynn Follett. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Pastor Lynn, you started off this morning. You're sharing with us how the Spirit of God was speaking to you. Now, the first. Um, you, I, I want to pick up there because I'm just going. This is actually a phenomenon, and uh, and and I'd love for uh, the listening audience to be able to just draw on that grace that you you you've shared from. So so you one one you hear the voice of God. God speaks to you, right? 
And the scriptures point to that all the way through. You know, my sheep know my mm. voice, Jesus says. You know, we can trust the spirit of truth to lead us in all truth and righteousness. He, you know, he's not um, he's not trying to be hidden there. He's actually speaking to us if we'll have ears to hear. Um, and so mm. you know, the first point I, I, I kind of am drawing from that is maybe some of our listeners have, have kind of shut down the voice of God by their own words, literally are... Oh, I don't hear him or I'm not sure that he speaks to me or he doesn't speak to me that he way, the way he speaks to you and so I, I don't hear his voice. There's the first opportunity for repentance this morning, isn't it, right there? You know, if, you, if you're carrying a story that is I don't hear the Father's voice, I don't hear Jesus' voice, well, I would, I would say there's grace right now for you to repent and to believe in accordance with the Scriptures that as a follower of Jesus you get to know his voice. And uh, and so mm-hmm. in knowing his voice, Pastor Lynn, what does it mean? Why, do you, why didn't God just say to you, uh, repent? Why didn't he just announce that word? What, what's, what's doing there? Um, well, I always ask him those things because that's the way he speaks to me. Um, you know, and I, I have come to the realisation that if he said repent, I go, oh, that's good, all right, I'll do that. But yeah, yeah. But when it's something that you don't know what that word means, and it's, it's happened quite a bit through my Christian walk, you actually have to search for and find what does that actually mean. And so that, to me, maybe it's my personality uh, because I like digging and fossicking, you know, and following trails and stuff like that. Um, that he knows that that's has catching my attention. So this is, this is a phenomenon because he said a word to you that you do not know in a language that you do not understand and yet you know, your spirit just knew this is the Lord, I need to look this up. What was the word again in yep. Italian? Pentimento. Pentimento. And he said it with an accent as well. Yeah, I know. I'm like, wow. Oh. Wow, Lord, you're funny. I find the Lord hilarious because he does those things and you're like yeah, catching you your attention. He does. Look at a platypus. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's a duck. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, well, well um, Pastor Susie Newman, uh, who is a wonderful artist, she knew exactly what it meant. And uh, so she and Pastor Murray were pretty excited when I was discussing it with them. And they're like, we know what that is. <laughs> yeah, so you, you unpacked it some more and said, like, there's the original painting that the artist might produce and then and then another whole painting over the top of that. It's almost like the canvas gets reused and and to, to the average punter that walks into a gallery, they see a painting and go, oh, yeah, that's nice. Um, and what you're suggesting is this word repentance is actually tied to the word of that picture of that image of a, a second painting and saying, no, look deeper, look deeper and see mm. deeper. And, and really that's what you've done with the word, isn't it? You've dug it mm. out. You've, you've um, mm. dug it out. Um, I, totally. Well, that that's the whole point. That's why I think the Lord uh, speaks to me like that because he wants me to dig through and find out what does this mean. So you know what happens when you start on a bunny trail like that you can't you know you just keep going and um i mean obviously you you know when god says that it's like okay it's me you want to talk to okay show me what i need to do you know um it, what do i need to repent of and so there's that you know that's that quiet space that comes where okay it's all about me I, as you know craig when you're a preacher there's no way if you're serious before God, that when you get up to preach a sermon, God hasn't taken you through that thing first. That's right. Yeah. True? Yeah, absolutely. Because I tell you what, if he hasn't, you fall over in the middle of that thing. That's not pretty. (laughs) (laughs) That's a ugly side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, and this will continue on. I haven't finished with this at all. I'm sure the Holy Spirit has definitely not finished in this area so you know um what can i say i just have to keep doing it 
Do you know yeah. the other the scripture that's coming to mind with this particular image, Pastor Len, is, um, uh, and I can't tell you which gospel it's in, but um, Jesus says something to the, the effect of, you know, the kingdom of God is like a man who went into his wardrobe and brought out treasures, both old and familiar and new as well. Mm-hmm. And it's like there's 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 um there's treasure in something that is familiar and and older. There's something that we've known that's a dimension of the kingdom or an attribute. But there's also the new and fresh, the the stuff that no no one's actually gotten to see yet or to to participate in yet. Mm. Um, I don't know, but for some today, the idea that the Lord might speak to you and speak in in a language and and words that you may not understand that that's possibly like a new treasure for somebody to um, to be able to participate in. Why don't you? Why don't we just take a moment, Pastor Lynn, Can I invite you to maybe just pray for us as the listening audience and oh, pray, pray that grace to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. Mm. And, and what he might say to the saints today in this invitation to intimacy. Would you just pray the, that, that grace for us today? That'd be great. Absolutely. Thanks, Craig. Well, Father, we're just uh, excited because this is a time where you are trying to catch our attention. And, and, and I really concur with what Craig has said there, that it is a new day and it, it, you are new every morning, Lord God. And our experience with you is treasure indeed. But, Lord God, there's treasure to be found every day, every day, Lord God. And, and I thank you that you're calling us into a space right now where we can dig for treasure. And and I pray, Father, for those who, who, who are hearing who have never heard you uh, lead them and guide them in specific, 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 specific that's the word. <laughs> I'm trying to get another one out. But, Lord God, in, in specific ways, uh, Lord God, expect expand their experience with you as far as as hearing not just your voice but lord god it's not just your voice when we say your voice we're not just speaking about the audible voice of god but lord we're talking about your leading us and your guiding and your directing in everything in our lives lord god you can use anything to speak to us so father i pray that there'd be an expansion of the the experience of um communication with you lord god and father uh, to 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 really understand that you can speak to us any way you like. You are the God of all the languages, Lord, and I thank you that you create a little a little. This is a treasure hunt for me, Lord God. When you do things like this, uh, that you want me to hunt down what you're saying, Lord God, because there's fun in that. There's fun in that direction that you give us. So, Lord, I thank you for the for the the, the beauty of of who you are and the relationship that you want to have for us uh, uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I think, Pastor Lynn, that's already shifted things on the Central Coast. This is a good morning, isn't it? This is a good morning. It's a great day. Uh, bless God. You know, uh, in the word repentance, metanoia in the Greek, as you rightly pointed out earlier, um, to, to change direction, you know, often taught, you know, I was heading left and then I turned around and headed right. Um, I, I, I like even better that I was heading down and I turned around yeah. and came up into, I came up into, I came up into the things of God, into the kingdom, understanding into the kingdom mindset. Almost like I'm 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 participating in my seated with Christ in heavenly placidness, you know, uh, the mm. repentance coming up into, you know, participating with Christ, with the mind of Christ, with mm. you know, reigning with Christ. These are some of the ideas that come to my mind when we explore repentance. Now, I used to maybe maybe you can speak this for a minute, but you know, some listeners will be hearing, oh, here's a preacher telling us we got to repent, and they're probably shaking their finger at us and they're probably, they're probably you know trying to call out all these miserable rotten conditions we're in and so on and and speaking judgmentally i mean some people have that kind of a picture um but in acts 5 32 i think it is um uh the, you read the scriptures and uh and and it says it was he jesus who gave repentance and the forgiveness of sin to israel this is Peter preaching mm. the gospel to, you know, to the Jews. And he says, 
It was Jesus who gave repentance. So automatically now, the 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 the, the, the repentance becomes a grace and a gift, a, a generous gift from the person of Jesus. And who knows this? You know, when you when you're in disobedience, when you're in darkness in an area in your life. You're, you have no inclination whatsoever to change that thing. And that's the problem with sin in, in, in the people of God is that, you know, we quite like our sin, thank you very much, and I don't really want to change. But the grace of the Lord Jesus to capture hearts, this gift of repentance that actually causes me to want to come up into the higher narrative of the kingdom, to come up into the place of being in Christ in heavenly places, the truth of that's where I really am. Um, he gave repentance and the forgiveness of sin. Get this, not not to um, not to Peter or to James and John or not to those guys, but yes, but not to, he's speaking to Israel, to the very people who, who yeah. caused his torturous death, who refused to acknowledge that he was the son of God, who insisted that, you know, that his whole existence was a blasphemy against God. To those people, he's giving repentance and the forgiveness of sin to the great mm-hmm. to come up higher. And and I got to say that that that's a beautiful picture of mm-hmm. repentance. For me. <clears throat> I notice you're in your word there, Lynn. I am. I've got about ten Bibles going at the moment because I preach out of a couple and I underline this one and then I underline that one and and then I was just thinking what you were talking about, um, Peter's. Second, I think it's his second speech out of Acts um, where he's talking to the Jews and he says um, it's the kindness and the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And, and you know, I think, um, you know, like the poor old guy standing on the side of the, 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 the footpath there, you know, repent, repent, you know, you're going to hell and all that. That was my idea of what Christianity was when I was a young person. And... Um, you know, when I met Jesus, it was like, what? This is this is outrageously great, you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like, and I think sometimes the concept of, of sin is uh, we just get it all wrong. It's like God is just so generous. <laughs> you want to read the whole Old Testament. You want to read the prophets. You want to see how all these years that the very people that God wanted to pour out his love on uh, just kept constantly turning away from him. And I'm like, he is so patient. He's yeah. still waiting. What an incredible um, God we have who is, his tolerance level is unbelievable. I mean, you and I would have gone like Moses, like, you know, I can't go, I'll chip them. Get rid of them, Lord. Like, I'm over it. I'm just over, I'm done with these people. Get rid of them. And yet God just constantly, he, he wants them to call him Ishi, my husband, the, you know, and he knows what divorce is like too, by the way, because the scripture says that Israel has divorced him. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're divorced out there and you've gone through that, I know it's horrible pain, um, God is able to comfort you through all that. That's just a little bit of a side salad um, because he's been divorced by the very people that he chose to love him. And but he still loves them, and they're still in there, and he is still working the plan. Oh, I just who wouldn't want to love God? Uh, I tell you what, we're hearing good news this morning, that's for sure. And Pastor Lynn, when you were speaking, then I thought, oh, you are a woman who has met kindness. You you are a woman who has encountered the oh. kindness of God. And uh, and I got to tell you, that's a good day when preachers are actually announcing repentance in a way that just is is the demonstration of the kindness of God. I, I'm stirred by that today. Oh, I know. I, I'll have a coffee, but I think that's a better message. <laughs> yeah. I'm a 94.9 on the FM dial, um, which, you know, people are sitting in cars all over the Central Coast dialed into New Expressions Programme. We have a kingdom giant in the region, Pastor Lynn Follett, as our guest, the superstar, super chick. Call her whatever you like, kingdom-wise. She's just a legend. We appreciate you. And, uh, you know, the other way people are listening is they jumped on the 
to the uh, online rema.cc and you can do that. You can listen live via the internet as well, which is great if you're in different ends of the house and you haven't got a radio or something, that's a great way to listen. Um, but I'll tell you what's really caught me is the Rema CC app. Um, if you don't have that on your phone yet, you are seriously missing out. Um, it is a brilliant, brilliant pocket resource. So kudos to the guys at Rema who've got it. You just need to go to your you know, your app store, whatever that is, and and uh, and look up Rima CC. And uh, it's a brilliantly little packaged up thing that's got uh, all sorts of teaching articles and and stories about life and stuff. It's got it's got um, worship. It's got live streaming capacity. It's got all the podcasts. I mean, get the Rima CC app on your phone and do it today because you'll be doing yourself a favour. I've been running I've been running some of the stories from that thing with some of my friends in conversation. Oh, I found out this about such and such. Where'd you find that? Oh, I was on the Rima. CC app. It's like, you should get that thing. It's got some great content. And I keep finding, you know, my big story was um, uh, old man Henry Holden, the guy who uh, made Hol the Holden Motor Group, you know. Um, and uh, Pastor Lynn, maybe you know this, but but I think it was uh, pre, pre Second World War, he had the largest automotive industry in the British Empire, right? He's a South Australian dude, Mr. Holden, Henry Holden. And he um, was obviously hugely successful in business and uh, and in manufacturing of motor vehicles and so on. Um, and and he was also the uh, the head of the Baptist Union in Australia for a whole pile of years. He was like twenty something years or something. You know, passionate Jesus man who was the mayor of his city as well. He was like just engaged in all sorts of spheres of life. And I'm just going. What an absolute legend. I found that out by the Rima CC phone app. So get it on your phone. You'll find all sorts of amazing stuff like that. Uh, for all you Holden lovers, you need to know the, the, the backstory about why Holden exists and the favour of God in that space. But, you know, we got a few minutes together with Pastor Lynn Follett, who you have been encouraging us to run into the kindness of God which is this gift of repentance, mm. get intimate with our father, mm. our, our lover, our our um our husband, as the scriptures describe Jesus as to his bride. Um, and I got to tell you, I, this is a right now word. Use this time right now to press into a real and tangible relationship with Jesus. Is that essentially what you're inviting us to, Pastor Lynn? Oh, look, feel free. Come to the table. I've Figured the table was free. Amen. The food is free. Jesus said, I set a table before you, before you in the presence of my enemies. So, you know, like when fear comes, and I mean, hello, is this a time of fear? You know, there's just so much fear that goes on in people's lives. I'm going to, you know, I need to do this. I need to do that. Or I'm not coming to do that. I'm not, you know, it's just everywhere. And it's like, you know, God hasn't given given us a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind Amen. so you know if you're getting if you're getting afflicted in your mind about these things this is a day i'm telling you to grab hold of jesus grab him because he's ready he's ready to be grabbed he just loves it um I, this scripture i love and it's out of the message and it's matthew 11 28 to 30 and it says are you tired are you worn out are you burned out on religion well, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace because I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And the word of God stopped full of goodness and light and it, and it's not contingent on your circumstances we are our circumstances shouldn't dictate the way that we are our behavior and so you know uh yeah this is a great day hallelujah uh, amen <laughs> what a beautiful picture pastor lynn my goodness you know let's just break this down into Really simple nuts and bolts. If you are listening today 
and you've you've been preoccupied with the narrative of media and social media mm. and so on about everything going on in the pandemonium of this world and 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 uh, and you're experiencing the stress, the anxiety, the fear, those stories Pastor Lynn called out earlier, then there is an invitation to repentance. In, in other words, an experience of the kindness of God to come mm. into <clears throat> to come into a place where Jesus welcomes you intimately to his table, to himself yep. personally. And to and to imbibe of the grace of rest and peace, and dare I say, a great measure of joy as well. Because you know, anyone who's been in in this Zoom today, we've been. I, I reckon we've laughed more than we've spoken because the joy of the Lord's our portion, right? That's our, that's our inheritance, our portion. It's like it's available now. What do I do? I come to him. I repent of mm. my, my coming to the media and to the, the the journalism reports and the opinion pieces. I repent of coming mm. to those and I come to him. Yeah? Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, like it's conspiracy theory central at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. And you just like, uh, you know, get back to the word. Just get into the word. Find out what he's saying. Um, you know what? We need to pray for our prime minister. He's the man that uh, God put in there. We prayed for the right man, and there's the man. Now, personally, I wouldn't like to be any leader in any political sphere right now um, because they're just huge things confronting them, and they need the wisdom of God. Um, you know, and that's that's good stuff. That's good tucker from God. Pray for your leaders. Um, you know, don't don't have your opinion right now. Uh, you can do that. We live in a society where we can make an opinion. Um, you know, we have uh, ways and means. We can put our name to something. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I kind of figured, Je I didn't see Jesus out the front of the temple protesting. I thought he went inside and he sorted it out because he is Jesus. But, um, yeah. I, I just believe God is calling us to that intimate place again. And, um, you know, pair down. Just listen quietly. Uh, still your heart. And, I mean, I know that's really hard because, you know, we've got, you know, families in the church with, you know, multiple children and they're, they're really trying to feel their kids and that. But, um, you know, we're trying to get alongside of them the best we can you know god is a god of inventions and creations and he'll show you some things to do for other people mm. it's fantastic that's beautiful that is that's beauty right there that's the way of the kingdom you know you get in and you get about other people and you serve and and find a different way and and all of a mm. sudden you're walking in your joy again because you're walking in the way of the kingdom i think that's that's a great grace i mean you look at Pakistan at the moment, sorry, Pakistan, Afghanistan at the moment, they reckon that Afghanistan has started to overtake China as the fastest growing church in the world, right? Uh, and and you wouldn't want to be there for quids, but I tell you what, the kingdom in that space is explosive and the, the way of the kingdom is mm. is just uh, just utter glory. I mean, we've seen reports of, of um, believers giving Bibles to Taliban members and so on. It's like this is an extraordinary space. And I've got to say, lockdown's tough. We've been three months in our own homes and stuff and not been able to have a coffee with my friend Pastor Lynn when I want to. It's quite a frustration. But I, I want to tell you that uh, that in the intimate encounter of Jesus, the, the testimony is it is well with my soul. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because I'm yoked to something that is easy and I'm burdened with something Burden that is light. light. Hallelujah. Yes. And if that's not your portion, then here's the thing. You can repent right now. Listen, um, I think you brought out some real treasures today, Pastor Lynn. Um, I, 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 you know, uh, repentance is so deeply uh, passionate in my heart. It's dear to my heart. I um I was preaching at the Salvos in Long Jetty one Sunday morning, and out of my mouth came these words: um, "Repentance is always the answer." 
right? Yeah. Because it is. It's like if something's off kilter in some way, shape or form, internally, emotionally, relationally, business-wise, if there's something off kilter, then then repentance is the answer, is to correct, to correct back to the way of the kingdom or to correct back to the king himself. And, uh, and as I said it, I said, oh, that would be, that would make a fantastic T-shirt. So um, the Salvation Army officer there at the time, who's still there, um, Major um, uh, Mel Humphrey, she, she designed the shirt up for me that literally reads, repentance is always the answer. It's become my favourite shirt, actually. Oh, check it out. And uh, so, if you, Evan, maybe uh, I can sell you that idea and you can just push that through Preacher, you know, the Preacher Network when you launch your, your clothing stuff this next week or whatever. But I've already repentance. got a repentance shirt. I'll share it with you offline. Oh, please do. Please do. Pastor Lynn, we've got one minute left. I would love it. One minute. If you, would mind, if you wouldn't mind uh, just praying for the Central Coast, this beautiful grace of repentance to be the portion of both pre-Christians who might not know there is a king to return to, but also to the believers who may have been wrestling with fear and anxiety and those things, correcting back to the kingdom, repenting back up into the awareness of being in him. Would you mind praying that prayer with us today? Love to. Beautiful. Love to. Thank you. It's such a privilege to be able to speak and communicate what God's doing. Well, Father, we um, we, we do. We, we have heart. Uh, like your heart, Lord God, to see people come to you. And, Father, this is such a a, a, um, a pressurised time of putting us into a small space. But, Lord God, it can increase our heart. It can now increase our experience with you. And, Father, we thank you that grace it comes with repentance. Uh, 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. So, Lord God, we just, we stand on that word today and we pray it out, Lord God. We speak it out that, Father, you want all to come to repentance. And so, Father, those uh, that uh, ears that are hearing this message today, I pray, Father, that the grace and the mercy and the loving kindness of God does not want anybody not to have a uh, a space and a place in his life and his heart and his kingdom. So, Father, thank you for your grace that you've extended to your people. And we pray that there'd be a revelation in our hearts, whether we're saved, we're not saved, of the grace that's been extended to us and the life that we can have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Well, thanks, Lynn. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate it. Happy days. Happy day. Thank you. Bless you, Pastor. Lynn. What a champion. And thank you for the ministry to the region. We love you so much. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Sorry, Lynn. You're dropping out. We'll see you next week, folks. You've been listening to an encore presentation of New Expressions, which can be heard live every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on 94.9 Rima Central Coast.